David Ken here with another question from the IB Question Bank on uh, Cepheid variable stars. We'll start by defining luminosity. Uh, that is the total power emitted by a star. Uh, and state the mechanism for the variation in luminosity of Cepheid variable stars. So the variable in Cepheid variable is their luminosity. They, go, they glow brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer periodically over time. The reason that they change luminosity is uh, there are cyclical currents. Uh, how do you spell cyclical? Cyclical currents in their upper atmospheres. Um, atmosphere is probably not the right word. How about layer? Cyclical currents in their upper layers, which cause them to grow and shrink in volume. Uh, as their volume grows, their luminosity grows. All right. The variation with time of the apparent brightness of a Cepheid variable is shown below. We see it growing and shrinking and growing, shrinking, shrinking and brightness. Two points on the cycle of the star have been marked A and B. Assuming that the surface temperature of the star remains constant, deduce whether the star has a larger radius after two days or six days. So that's here and here. So we started our measurement at time zero and two days later. The apparent brightness was at a maximum. Six days later, the apparent brightness was at a minimum. And the question is, when would the star be largest? Uh, it's largest at A because more power is emitted. Therefore, from a larger surface area. Hence, uh, a larger radius. Uh, explain the importance of Cepheid variables for estimating distances to galaxies. Uh, well, the nice thing about Cepheid variables is that uh, their period is uh, relatable, is uh, dependent, uh, determines their luminosity. There's a relationship between them. We can use their period to calculate their luminosity. Uh, this measurement, along with Uh, their apparent brightness can be done from Earth. So we don't need to move Earth from place to place like we do with the parallax method. We can do all of these measurements from Earth. We can get their luminosity and their apparent brightness. Using the luminosity and the apparent brightness, the distance can be calculated. Using the relationship, uh, we know this relationship pretty well by now. We've used it a few times. It is apparent brightness equals luminosity on 4 pi d squared. So normally getting the luminosity is tough, but with the Cepheid variable, we can uh, measure it from the comfortable chair in our uh, telescope at our observatory. Uh, okay, we've got to do a calculation here. The maximum luminosity of this Cepheid variable star is 7.2 times 10 to the 29 watts. Presumably we calculated that knowing that the period was, uh, whatever this is, six days. Uh, we'll use additional data from the graph to determine the distance to the Cepheid variable using the relationship that we just described. 
so using this relationship here, we know that the distance to the Cepheid variable is the square root of the luminosity on 4 pi times the apparent brightness. Uh, we were given the luminosity, 7.2 times 10 to the 29 watts. And then the trick is getting the uh, apparent brightness. The graph gives us an apparent brightness, but it actually gives us a range of apparent brightnesses from min to max. Uh, but the maximum luminosity is tied to the maximum apparent brightness. When the star is brightest, it appears brightest. So if we're going to be using the maximum luminosity here, uh, which we are, because that's what's given to us, we ought to be using the maximum apparent brightness, which looks like it comes in at about 1.25 times 10 to the negative 10 watts per square meter. So that's 1.25 times 10 to the negative 10, square root of the whole thing, and we get 2.14 times 10 to the 19th meters. Uh, lastly, Cepheids are sometimes referred to as standard candles. Uh, explain what's meant by this. Um, well, in, in distant galaxies, lots of things are different. If they're very, very far away, things like Doppler effect are going to have a big impact on things like the color of the light that we observe from these galaxies. So it becomes hard to, to determine the properties of the stars in that galaxy and how far away they are. Uh, but the nice thing about Cepheids is uh, their period is unrelated to their distance. So we can measure their distance uh, no matter which galaxy they're in. So from any galaxy that we can observe. Uh, in other words, they behave the same in all galaxies. And that's why we call them standard candles.